Good morning. This is for third grade ELA. This is text set three, um, sharing our world animals. The essential question is why it is important to learn about the animals that share our world. Our goal for today is to understand the author's message and purposes in writing the book. So we're going to be talking about pie, persuade, inform, and to entertain. A guinea pig is a cuddly little animal that makes a great pet. Open the, um, I'm going to open up the page, last two pages. Look at all these guinea pigs. The title is I Love Guinea Pigs by Dick King Smith. What meaning do you take from the book? What do you think the meaning is? Let's look at the guinea pigs in the book. Okay, what word would you use to describe them? I think many people find these illustrations cute and funny. Do you think that's why the author loves guinea pigs? Let's find out exactly why he says, I love guinea pigs. There is a silly old saying that if you hold a guinea pig up by its tail, its eyes will drop out. Well, of course they wouldn't, even if you could, which you couldn't, because guinea pigs don't have tails. No tail! Look at that! See, there's no tail. Good. And they aren't big pigs either. They're rodents, like mice and rats and squirrels. Rodents have special front teeth. They are great for gnawing things. These teeth go on gnawing growing throughout the animal's life and are self-sharpening. What do guinea pigs have in common with pigs? The males and females are known as boars and sows. So, so notice how the author uses these comments in small letters to give a little extra scientific information about guinea pigs. So these are scientific information. These are facts. As for the other part of their name, guinea pigs were first brought to Europe about 400 years ago by Spanish sailors, probably from a country in South America called Dutch Guinea. Dutch Guinea. And the sailors called them guinea pigs. In fact, the guinea pig is a member of the cavi family, and its Latin name is cavi porcellus, which means a piggy looking cavi. Interesting. Anyway, whatever they're called, it's the way they look that I've always liked. They're so chunky and chubby and cuddly with their blunt heads and sturdy bodies and short legs. They come in tons of different colors and they can be smooth coated or rough coated or long coated, not to mention the other varieties. I've had hundreds of guinea pigs over the last 50 years, but I've always liked the Abanaz Abanazans best. So there's crested, smooth, proverbian. Sheltie and Abernasses. So here is a picture of Abernasses guinea pigs, the author's favorite kind. What do you think? Guinea pigs are such sensible animals. They're awfully easy to keep because they are fussy. They don't like the cold, of course, or the damp any more than you would, and they're not happy living in a pokey little place any more than you would be. But as long as they have a comfortable, warm, dry place to live, guinea pigs are as happy as can be. So guinea pigs are like a really big roomy hutch, or better still, a wire pen out on the grass. They're hardy animals and don't often get sick. Properly, properly cared for, they can live a long time. Most guinea pigs live for um, about five to eight years. I once had a cr crested sow named Zen. She lived two years with me and then ate more with one of my daughters. People's hair grows wider as they age, but Zen grew darker. How oh, interesting. Guinea pigs need plenty of food. They love eating just like you do. Feeding them is half the fun of having them. Some people, of course, feed them nothing but hay and pellets from the pet store, and they're just fine. But how boring a diet like that must be, both for the piggy-looking cavy and its owner. I always used to give many my guinea pigs lots of other kinds of food as well. Cabbage and cauliflower leaves, carrots, pieces of bread, and apple pe peelings, and wild plants. 
like dandelions and clover. I gave them water, too, of course. Guinea pigs need cleaning, drinking, clean drinking water every day, and their water bottle often needs washing because they like bol blowing pieces of food back up the spout. One especially nice thing about guinea pigs is that if you handle them regularly and carrying them around, stroke them, talk to them, and make a fuss over them, they become really fond of you. The correct way to pick up a guinea pig is with one hand over its shoulder and the other supporting its bottom. Another nice thing about guinea pigs is that they talk a lot. When they want food or water, they often give a sort of whistle sound, sometimes low, sometimes loud. Boars say chudder when they're squ squaring up for a fight. So do sows when their babies pester them too much. Other things guinea pigs say are put, chut, tweet, and drrr. But when one guinea pig says purr to another guinea pig, it's a plain as the nose on your face. That it only means one thing. I love you. So how do you think guinea pigs sound? Try saying the guinea pig sounds aloud. Would you agree with the author that talking is another nice thing about guinea pigs? And that brings me to what's best of all about having guinea pigs, baby ones. Because their ancestors, the wild cabbies of South America, lived out in the open with enemies all around them, their young ones had to be ready to run for it. So the guinea pig so carries her unborn litter for a very long time, about 70 days, and they arrive in the world fully furred with their eyes open and their mouths ready filled with, their, filled with teeth. Newborn guinea pigs are such a comical sight. Their heads and feet look too big for their bodies. Baby rabbits are born blind and naked and helpless, but not baby guinea pigs. But most immediately, they show an interest in those two favorite guinea pig pursuits, eating and conversation. Of all the guinea pigs I've had, there were two that I ne will never forget. Both were Avanazans. Both were boars, which means they were boys, and each in his time fathered dozens of lovely big-headed, big-footed babies. One was, was a bright golden color, and his name was King Arthur. The other was a blue roan named Beach Boy. Both are buried in my yard. There's a solitary apple tree at the edge of my lawn, and I look, I, I like to look at it and think that under it, under it, Beach Boy and King Arthur lie peacefully, one on one side of the, the tree and one on the other. I'm not sad about this, just happy to remember what a lot of pleasure I've had from all my guinea pigs. One especially nice thing about guinea pigs is that if you make a fuss over them, they become really fond of you. So let's look at this page for a second. Do you think this man in the picture is the author? How does this picture help you understand his feelings about guinea pigs? Look at his eyes and look at how he's looking at the guinea pig. The illustrator Anita Durham must have drawn this picture of the author Dick King Smith. Okay, and that is the end of the story. I need you to make sure you have everything written down. And we are done.